Hi there, and welcome to the Maya Learning Channel. Today I'm going to show you how to make a pulsing audio tunnel, like you might see in a music video or title sequence. This is a pretty straightforward effect to set up in MASH, so let's go ahead and get started. So I'll begin by creating a default cube, then switch to the MASH workspace. Now I'll click up here to create a MASH network. and then change the distribution type to radial. I'll just up the number of points to get the ring looking a little fuller. There. Now to turn this ring into a tunnel, all I need to add is a replicator node. Let's replicate the ring like a hundred times. Nice. That was easy. So now with the replicator, I can do all sorts of funky things like offset or rotate the rings. For now though, I'm just going to scale them up slightly. That'll give me a, the tunnel I want, but things are still looking a little drab. So I'll liven them up with a color node. Then I'll just crank these random dials, like so, and mess with the seed value for different patterns too. Now it's time to add my music, which I'll do in two stages. First, I'll add an audio node to the MASH network. This allows me to transform cubes based on an audio waveform, in this case by scaling them in Y, which you can see here. Now I'll just source my WAV file. In order to hear the music though, I'll also need to drag the same song into the time slider. Now I'll just pump up the total number of frames and play the scene. Hmm, so a couple of things have clearly gone wrong. For one, my audio node isn't doing anything, or is it? If I zoom out and play the scene again, You can clearly see that the audio is in fact animating the cubes, but only in our first ring. That's because it's being evaluated after our replicator node. So if I just change the order of that by middle dragging, then I can ensure that the audio node gets replicated too. Of course, I'm not actually hearing any audio yet, which is because the playback speed isn't set to real time by default. So I'll just change that now by right-clicking the time slider and hitting Playback Speed Real Time. And there we go. Now I can start to get really creative. For instance, what happens if I change the audio mode? Now I get this trippy swirling effect instead of the pulsing. This is already pretty cool, but let's go even further with some secondary animations. So down here in the Replicator's Pattern section, there are controls to animate specific sections of the tunnel. Right now the pattern is set to every second row, so watch what happens if I rotate them. Not bad, eh? Then to animate that, I'll just keyframe the attribute. I'll start when the first beat hits, which is right around frame 285. So right click, set key, then I'll just scrub to the end and set it to something really big like, I don't know, 2800. Set key. There. Okay, not bad, but I could exaggerate it even more. What if I tried scaling them too? Ooh, I like that. So let's animate that too. First I'll set a keyframe, maybe here. Then I'll start it at the first beat, just like the rotation. So zero that out, and set key. Okay, now that looks pretty cool. 
Although, if I'm being really nitpicky, the pulsing isn't really uniform over the entire song. It seems to be accelerating quite a bit. To get a better look at why, I'm going to click the select button to select the node, which shows us the problem right here in the graph editor. Notice how the curve slopes up gradually? That's why the animation is accelerating. So to fix that, I'll just select all the points, and then click the linear tangent button to straighten them out. Now if I go back and play again, the pulsing remains consistent. You know what else would be kind of cool? If the color strobe to the music. So before filming this video, I mapped out the tempo of the song and found that each beat is roughly 15 frames. So with that information, I can just go to the color node and set the random seed to equals frame over 15. Now I'll just rewind. So it's working, but like the other secondary animations, I don't really want it to start strobing until after the first beat. So I'm just going to go right click here again and edit my expression. I'm going to add an if frame is greater than 284, then hit edit. Now the colors shouldn't strobe before frame 285 anymore, which they don't. Perfect. Finally, I'm going to add some text to fly through our tunnel. Since I like the current framing, I'm going to work in a new camera instead of messing with this one. Then I'll just click the type button here to create some text. Let's make this read Autodesk Presents. And I'll just center it and scale it down so it fits. And then I can keyframe its transforms to move it through the tunnel. So right click, set key. And then right click, set key. Then I'll just go back to my original camera. That looks okay, I guess, but I could probably do a little more with it. Let's add a transform node. I can use this to translate, rotate, or scale the entire network. So here's a rotation, or a little less. Is a translate. In particular, rotating in Z seems to give me a really nice effect. But rather than the entire tunnel spinning, I'd prefer if it was just around the text. So to do that, I can just add a falloff object. Now if I scale this up a bit, you can clearly see that only the cubes inside the falloff area spin around. Then all I have to do is animate it to follow the text. There, that looks pretty good, if a bit too uniform. I'm going to make a very minor tweak by adding a bit of randomness to the transform. There, now that really pops. Another nice thing is that I can reuse this effect too, like if I wanted to add a second type object. So I'll just add mesh, maybe change the font on this one, scale it, and 
and then keyframe it just like before. And then I'll do the same for the falloff object. Great. So all that's left now is to render everything out in Arnold. For the text, I just need to switch their shaders to an Arnold-friendly one. So that's AI standard surface. And then I'll do the same for the other one. When it comes to the color node, I'll need to take a few simple steps. First, I'll go to the repro node and make sure color per vertex is turned on. So right here. Then I'll assign a new Arnold shader to the repro mesh. So again, that's AI standard surface. It causes the color to vanish for now, but don't worry about that. Instead, I'll bump up the emission value so that the cubes emit light. I can check that out by rendering a single frame. So that's working, but obviously I want my color back. Actually, before I do that, I'm just going to reduce my specular to get a flatter look. Now to get the colors to show up, I need to pass the color per vertex data from the color node to our shader. That data is stored here in the default color set. To start, I'm going to select the repro mesh and open the Arnold section and turn on export vertex colors. Then I'll go back to the Arnold shader and modify the base color. In here, I'm going to assign it an Arnold utility node called AI user data color. Then in the attributes field, I'll just enter the color set holding our CPV data. So now if I render again, well, the color's back, but it's all washed out. That's because if I go back here, you can see we're emitting straight up white light. I'd really prefer to emit colored light, so let me try something here. I'm going to open up the node editor, which is one of Maya's most powerful tools. By clicking this button here, I can see all the nodes that make the tunnel what it currently is. One of those is the Arnold shader. So clicking the same button, I can see everything that makes up the Arnold shader. In particular, notice the AI user data color. Remember this guy? If I expand it, and what it's connected to, then I can literally see it feeding CPV data to the Arnold shader. Right now it's only doing that for the base color, but if I were to drag this value here, then I can actually connect it to the emission color too. Now if I render again, a much more vibrant. And finally, to render the animation, I just need to go to the render settings, switch from single to multi-frame rendering, set a frame range, then go to the rendering menu set and hit render, render sequence. And once everything's done outputting, this is what you should get.